In the past, people have shown that among people who have HIV in a low CD4 count, when they take antiretrovirals, over time their economic, economic productivity goes up. They can work more hours, uh, they can work more days in a month, um, and their children uh, have better levels of educational attainment. So this, this study wanted to try and get at what happens sort of before people become ill. And so um, the people included in the study included people with, without HIV infection, with HIV infection, and among those with HIV infection, um, people with high CD4 counts who had not yet gone to access therapy, as well as people with lower CD4 counts. And essentially, um, the study showed that if your CD4 count is above 500, that the amount of work that you can do is the same as individuals who are not HIV infected. Um, but that as the CD4 count declines, even among those who are not on antiretroviral therapy, your ability to work goes down as well. Um, so that the difference between somebody with a CD4 count of 500 and one with uh, a CD4 count of um, 200 is essentially a week, close to a week of, of work per month. Um, and that is the economic cost of the disease progression even before we get into a range where people think of like, um, you know, of patients being susceptible to AIDS and AIDS related infections. Um, so in the larger framework, I think that there's an increasing uh, belief that the solution to the HIV problem in Africa is not treating your way out of the problem. It's using antiretroviral medications to prevent um, to prevent people from becoming ill and, uh, and disabled before recovering them. It's to prevent that process. And so this study sort of extends that perspective into the realm of economics as well as, as, well as health outcomes. So in other words, instead of losing your economic productivity and regaining it, if you treat people at a higher CD4 count, they will be able to maintain the level of economic productivity without sort of losing it and regaining it in the first place.